Now that I'm a Disney Shill channel, let's catch up. Uh, over a month ago, I made a review of the Cars movie game, and the gameplay had issues, but otherwise, I had a great time with it, because it put you in the world of Cars super well. A lot of the comments were telling me I should play the next game, made a national championship, because it was the real deal, better Cars game. Um, I reviewed it, and it definitely was not that. And then all the comments on that video were like, well look, I know we lied about Made a National, but trust me on this one, the next game, Cars Racer Rama is where it's at. It's safe to say going into this one, I was more skeptical than ever. Our review scores weren't great, the series was already on a downward trend, the developer changed, and as well intended as all these nice comments were after Made a National, I wasn't exactly buying it. Now, pause that eye roll, I know you've read the title of this video, Racer Rama might indeed be the best Cars game yet, but maybe not in the way you'd expect because it is super different to the first game. Rather than the developer of the first two games making this, assumedly because they had a big year in 2009, THQ assigned this game to Californian team Incinerator Studios. These guys inherited the in-house engine and assets from Rainbow, which they were more than familiar with as they made some of the ports of the first two Cars games, as well as the Wii and PS2 ports of MX vs ATV Untamed. What seemed to have happened here was THQ wanted to squeeze that last bit of toothpaste out of what seemed to be a financially successful two-game series so far, but they wanted to do it with a very low development budget and couldn't just make Cars 2 the game yet because it was still two years off. Uh, a lot of reviews at the time slammed this game for even existing. They criticised its very obnoxious sort of cash-in kind of nature, which is completely fair enough, but let's not be grumpy and let's take another angle here. We'll just accept that this thing exists, like, like it had to come out for some reason, and uh, look at it from Incinerator's perspective. They had their low budget and a whole heap of assets and were likely just told to do the best they could. What this means is that they've cut back on the amount of cutscenes, have structurally made another open world game, and haven't changed the gameplay or visuals too much. That's not to say they haven't improved them, like with the graphics looking back on the first version of that first game, this looks far better than that with like more foliage and particle effects and especially reflections, and it looks decently better and cleaner than Made in National 2, but for a 2009 game it's definitely lacking and was obviously kept to a lower standard so that the Wii and PS2 versions weren't too dissimilar. The driving physics generally feel slightly lighter than Made national to me, and according to the loading screens, lightning is tuned differently for each area, which wasn't super noticeable honestly aside from the one 4x4 off-roading map. Uh, the biggest change is the drifting, which feels a lot better. Rather than it being holding two buttons to sort of artificially slide, it's more intuitive as you hold the drift button to enter a drift, and then let go and try and balance the car sideways. This makes counter steering have more of a role here, which is great because we can finally turn left to go right though. I definitely think they could have made the drifting more heavy, and for it to be harder to straighten back up. It has a bit of a light bouncy feel to it which isn't super satisfying but it's definitely better than what we had before. On top of this Raceo Rama rewards you with boost for doing drifts which is fantastic and something the series really always should have done. From a pure driving perspective Raceo Rama is the best in this trilogy by far. That's not to say it doesn't have all the usual trappings though. Uh, the crashing in particular is still super whack and unpredictable. The engine doesn't really know what to do with collisions, so you kind of just bounce off things weirdly, and trying to rotate the car midair is super unnatural, and just generally the physics can all feel a bit unreliable from time to time. Come on, the ball! Watch the ball! The story this time revolves around Chick Hicks, who I'm glad returns from his absence in Maiden National. The general gist of it is that Chick has his own racing academy which he wants to use to take out Lightning and Doc's academy, so you go through the story beating his cronies one by one in different areas before eventually beating Chick himself. And as usual, there's heaps of seemingly irrelevant missions sprinkled in with zero explanation. Um, in some sense, this game is very similar to Maiden National, where you went through chapters working your way up to beat those pesky non-Americans, but um, the story is much more in the background here compared to Made National because of the fewer cutscenes. And even then the story is still better than Made a National because not only is there at least a looming threat over the game and the guy at the top is Chick rather than some rando, but because they've generally just written the cutscenes and characters a lot better here. For one, the new characters don't just look like completely normal cars with eyes, thank god. Like, they're, they're not as good as the original movie's cars, but they're still a lot better than those weird things we had in Made a National, and sometimes they're even kind of funny. On top of this, Lightning is a lot more cocky in this game instead of being all about friendship like in the last game. Um, though it's missing a lot of the original characters in the story, Racer Rama just has a better flow and vibe to it all compared to Made in National, and though it doesn't really get close to the original game in this regard, it's still generally good enough, and it even got a giggle out of me from time to time. Daddy, I want new tires, new paint, new everything, and I want it now! Whatever you want, sweetie. I'll make the usual arrangements. 
Thank you, Daddy. Now I've got some shopping to do. You know how buying always makes my hurt go away. Out of my way, you parasites. Daddy just opened a slew of platinum accounts on Romeo Drive, and I plan on maxing out every one. You've probably noticed this is not Radiator Springs. This is in fact Santa Carbarera, based on LA or Santa Monica, which is one of the handful of new areas in Race Rama. All of these new areas are about the size of a single area in the last games, and they're super welcome additions. Each one is distinct both with their visuals and their track design, and it's fun going through the game seeing where it'll send you next. While I'd say on average the tracks are still better in Meta National, that's kind of misleading because this has a lot more tracks overall, and probably just as many good tracks or things considered. I'd argue that the variety that the less entertaining ones provide put it a step above Maiden National overall in this area, especially with all the visual variety. That was a really convoluted way of saying that the tracks are the best in this game. I particularly liked Santa Carbarera. The grid-like corners and the ramps and jumps and going around tight streets with the more windy roads surrounding it almost made me feel like I was in a Midnight Club game. Almost. Uh, keep in mind, I'm being fairly generous with this game, like I am judging it entirely as a budgety movie tie-in, but I genuinely genuinely had a lot of fun in this area, to the point where I wish they just set the whole game here and made the map like five times as large, but you know, then I guess I may as well actually go play Midnight Club. Along with all these new maps, the three Radiator Springs areas are back, but they've been stitched together into one giant area, which I really like. You can drive from Ornament Valley to Radiator Springs to Talthan Pass without a loading screen for the first time, which is really neat, and it's based on the better first games version of these places rather than Maiden Nationals. The fact that there's an improved version of the entire map from the last couple of games, along with all the new maps, really makes it feel like there's a generous amount of substantial content in this game. Kachow. They focused up the actual events in a logical way too, and most of the time in this game you'll simply be racing, which is great because it's always what these games have done best. And because of this, when it breaks up the racing with some of the weirder stuff, it's usually quite welcome, like with the really odd quick time Matador event or a super cool mission which sent Mater to Tokyo for one race. Tokyo isn't a hub area in this game, you just go there for a single linear race and it plays dance music and it's all stylish, and I found it to be really cool and stuff like this gives this game a bit of extra charm it didn't need to have. Speaking of the soundtrack, they've redone the whole thing and it doesn't include any songs from the last two games. Having just finished the game, I couldn't actually recall any of the music, so I went back and gave it a listen, and it's decently fitting stuff. It's all original standard-ish background music, which has a mostly Midwestern twang, and it blends in just fine. There's no licensed music, so even though I will always miss Life is a Highway and it's a crime not to put that song in a Cars game, I'm actually glad they didn't just reuse tracks from the previous games, because the other ones were starting to annoy me. I bet y'all wish you could be cool like me. Encountering resistance. Hey, watch the paint job, would you? Unlike those previous games, this game is simply broken into a linear set of main missions and completely optional side missions. I imagine if you stick to the main missions you could complete this game in just a few hours, but for this review's sake I obviously had to check out the other missions, and while there is a few boring collectathon style missions again, I mean they even replace tractor tipping with what's essentially another collectathon, for the most part the side missions are quite fun and much improved over the previous game's offerings, to the point where I would actually stop to do some of them just because I actually felt like doing them which really isn't my style at all with these kind of open world games. There's just a lot of different types of races which is great and it includes a bad Mario Kart ripoff which is kind of interesting. I particularly liked the new time trial precision style races where you had to like race around cones and if you hit them it added to your time. Um, it's all good stuff and you can obviously just pick and choose the fun ones. I also like how they had endurance races in the massive Radiator Springs area utilizing how they stitched together those old maps. Through all this you're constantly rewarded with cosmetics and unlocks for the arcade arcade modes, with the cosmetics being a huge part of how they marketed this game. And, you know, they delivered. Uh, it's far more customizable than the other games, and you can get more into the specific parts of the car, and there's just generally more options at hand to screw up what lightning looks like. Uh, this isn't something I care heaps about, but I know if I was a kid when this came out, I would have been pretty into it. I just can't imagine how microtransaction-y this would be if it came out today, though. This all culminates in an overall experience that is super laid back. Uh, I found the hardest difficulty, while it was slightly easier than I 
I'd prefer still provided enough of a challenge to keep me engaged and progressing through the story. And unlocking all the cosmetics along the way was quite fun and unlike the experience I had with the previous games. Vader National was just kind of bad, but I found myself playing through the original game so I could see more of the characters and the cutscenes and where it would take me to next even though the actual racing was boring because it was so damn easy, but here I found myself actually enjoying the gameplay and the racing itself and everything else was just a nice bonus. I feel like Incinerator Studios really knew what to do with this series. Remember, they made the Wii version of the first game and these versions of Made a National, and through familiarizing themselves with those games, it seemed that they knew exactly what they wanted to do to tighten this one up. Like, being rewarded with boost for drifting is just such a logical addition, and focusing mostly on the racing itself is something that I really wish the other games did more of. So then, we come to the grand question. Is this the best Cars game so far? Well, Sort of. Um, I think the first game was certainly more unique. Uh, having the entire voice cast back and seeing Radiator Springs in game form for the first time was really quite something, even if the game doesn't nearly play as good as Racerama. I think if you want to return to the Cars world and hang out with all the characters, then go with the original game for sure, but if you want a pretty solid fun racing game from start to finish set in the Cars world, then Racerama is the one to go with. Personally, I think Racerama is the better game, but I like the original one more, if that makes sense. It probably doesn't. Um, if you pick up a copy of Racerama, get it on 360 which has the best frame rate. This is the PS3 version which is alright but has some frame dips here and now like in Radiator Springs. Those three could spell IQ if I spotted them the eye. I wash myself with a rag on a stick. So here we end the review. Um, I feel very uncool reviewing these games. Like. People ask me what I do on the internet in real life, and I'm like, oh, I review Cars games. Like, it's, it's, it's not a very cool thing to do, but you know, part of me is really enjoying this, and I got a copy of Cars 2, so if there's still interest, then logically I'll get on to reviewing that soon, and then I guess I'll have to review the recent Cars 3 game as well, or I'll lose my mind by the incompletion of this series. Also, that game came out on PS3, Wii U, and 360, even though it's a 2017 release, which I find super weird. Um, yeah, anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the review. Let me know if you want a Cars 2 review or a Cars 3 review or any other review of anything. Um, check me out on Twitter and Discord and like and subscribe and check out my other videos. Uh, if you like movie games, I recently did a video on Wolverine Origins and I've done one on Avatar the game and one on Goldeneye where I compared Goldeneye to the film. And um, yeah, do all that stuff and have a good one.